Hey, Dr. C here with you. So have you heard about T2? This is all about the unsung hero in your thyroid spectrum of hormones. <laughs> uh, just a quick primer to give some context for this one. So T4 is the one we hear about the most, and that is the hormone your thyroid makes the most of. T3 gets a lot of press too, but everyone ignores T2. So what do these numbers mean? Well, so T is for thyroglobulin. That's a protein, which is a modification of tyrosine. <clears throat> and thyroglobulin, I think of it like a coat hanger, right? So you have this coat hanger and it's got certain spots where coats could sit and you could have you know, any number of coats that are on the racks or not. And two coats or two iodine atoms in this case on the hanger makes T2. Three coats, three iodine atoms is T3 and four iodine atoms is T4. And your body generally utilizes these hormones by breaking down, pulling off iodine atoms and changing the hormone to do so. When all of them are gone, you've got an inactive protein which is eliminated. There's also a T1, and I've never seen clear evidence that it does do anything, but there's no longer any debate that T2 does do something, that it is metabolically active. It's also clear that the thyroid does also make T2. For a long time, we thought that T2 only came from your body breaking down T4 and T3. But now that's clear evidence your thyroid does make it. So, well, why is it worth thinking about T2? Well, if you have thyroid disease, your thyroid is underactive, or if your thyroid's been taken out, definitely you can be low in T4 or T3. However, we now know that T2 also runs low and it has different jobs. There are things that it does that are not the same as what T3 does. Now, many talk about T2 being inactive, like T1 is or reverse T3 is. And partial truth, there's different kinds of T2. <laughs> and that's based upon where, that I, where those two iodine atoms are attached. There's one called 3,5 T2, then there's 3,3 three prime T2, then we've got 3 prime, 5 prime T2. And 3,5 is one we'll be referring to from here on out as T2. But do know that yes, there actually are different types and someone could conflate the discussion about one type and misattribute its traits to another. But we're talking about 3,5 T2 moving forward. Now, of all the things that it does, a lot of it comes down into basal metabolic rate. So it seems that T2 is one of the biggest regulators of how many calories our body burns at rest. And this may be more relevant than T3 or T4. And if you're not making your own thyroid hormone and you're not ingesting T2, you're quite likely to be low in T2. There were some studies looking at people who had had their thyroid gland removed and it saw where their T2 levels were. And basically, they had about half as much T2 as healthy people, even when they were taking thyroid replacement. You've also seen that when women get pregnant, their levels of T2 are much lower than they are for others. So a lot of the thought about T2 is part of what I've been calling this thyroid renaissance. Just a lot of revisiting of all things thyroid and kind of avoiding a lot of the past assumptions. Back in the 70s, there was a lot of research done on T2 to see if it were an important part of thyroid replacement and also to see if it could be used to lower cholesterol. You know, what we've known for quite a while is that those with low levels of thyroid hormones often have higher levels of blood cholesterol. In fact, I talked to my doctors a couple days ago and there was a case of a woman who was seen who was so severely low in thyroid. There's actually a couple of cases like this that came in recently. Um, TSH scores of in the hundreds and free hormones like zero, like barely measurable. And they both had cholesterol levels in the three to 400 range. So yeah, strong link between thyroid hormones and cholesterol. And the researchers in the 70s thought, hey, maybe there's some way we could find a thyroid hormone that could lower cholesterol, but not create hyperthyroidism when it was given in excess. And they studied T2 for that. And it turned out you can't just take it till you're blue in the face. It is an active thyroid hormone. But we know that it affects oxygen consumption faster than T3 does, which is the main marker of basal metabolic rate. We also know that it's needed to activate many detoxification enzymes. There's data saying that it increases the synthesis of ATP from the mitochondria, so our formation of energy. We also know that it activates 
our brown adipose tissue, and that's the fat that burns fat. T2 is also important to help maintain muscular activity and help the liver and the muscles burn fat. It protects renal function, and it also treats, makes muscles work in ways like exercise. So when T2 is present, your muscles have a certain amount of tone and basal activity. When T2 is lacking, they have less of that. We know that T2 levels predict a lower body mass and better blood sugar control, and they also affect cholesterol. So what happens when humans take T2? Well, there's very little data, but what has been done is pretty encouraging. So one, the one really high quality study was placebo controlled. Uh, they gave humans supplemental T2 for 28 days. And what they saw was a spontaneous weight loss of about nine pounds. This happened without there being changes to free T3, free T4, or TSH levels. And there was also no cardiac side effects noticed. Because of these effects, there is currently work to develop some assays to measure blood levels of T2. And in the coming years, we expect that will be a standard part of our thyroid care. So what do you do if you're low in T2? Well, this is one of the reasons why I'm a fan of natural desiccated thyroid. So uh, T4 medications don't have it. T3 medications don't have it. In the same way we have problems of T4 to T3 conversion, there can also be barriers of T3 to T2 conversion. Some may not do that well enough. So the one form of medication that has that is natural desiccated thyroid. And you know this, the T2 and the potency of it explains one of the enigmas about dose conversions. So most resources say that a one grain dose of natural desiccated thyroid is about the same as a 100 microgram dose of T4. But when you do the math on the T3 and the T4 in the natural thyroid, it doesn't fit. So that one grain of natural thyroid has about 36, I'm sorry, 38 micrograms of T4 and about nine micrograms of T3. Now, if you figure that T3 has four, five times the potency of T4, and you run the math, you end up with 74 total micrograms of T4. So how does that equal 100 micrograms of T4? Well, most argue that that difference comes from the T2, that because the T2 is there, those 74 micrograms of T4 and T3 work more like 100 micrograms of T4. So we don't have good data on exactly how much is in desiccated thyroid, but because it is standardized to both total iodine and T4 and T3, we would expect the amounts of T2 to be rather consistent from batch to batch. You know, one small dark side of T2, there are some over-the-counter supplements and some bodybuilding supplements that use uh, versions of T2 that are frankly not legal for use in the United States, but they are present. And there's not any sense of standardization in them, and we don't even know about proper dosing in them apart from them when they're found in natural desiccated thyroid. So they're not advised and they could be unsafe. They could have harmful effects and they're taken in high dosages. But the important way to get T2 if you're lacking in it is to be on desiccated thyroid. And we've done clinical trials showing that those on an equivalent dose of natural thyroid versus T4 only have a basal metabolic rate that might be 300 calories per day higher. And the T2 is probably a big part of that. So T2, big unsung hero, big positive facet of natural thyroid, and something that now you're aware of. All right, take great care, and I'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.